Hi, and welcome back to another adventure. Or maybe more properly, I should say a follow-up adventure from the last video. In that last video, we talked about using subframe selector to do frame approval. And in that video, I also mentioned that it was a bad idea to use SNR weight as an approval expression. That seems a little counterintuitive. After all, frames with high SNR are good, not bad. But SNR can actually go bad on you. And the way it can do that is if clouds come through and reflect light pollution back down into your camera. Your camera gets more signal, your signal to noise ratio goes up, but the part of the signal that we care about, that part from the actual target, is actually going down. And so it's bad signal to noise ratio. And I've got some data to show exactly how that happens. If we look here in subframe selector, I have 254 frames from a night of green frames on M101. Each frame was 60 seconds. According to my approval expression, these are all good frames. The FWHM is okay. The eccentricity is okay. So they're good frames, right? Subframe selector says so. But if we look at SNR weight, we can see that most of our frames are hovering here around 0.7. But there's this one big section where SNR weight goes up to twice what it was. In this highest expression, it's 1.59. And there's a lot that are nearly twice as high. And even a couple of blips further out. If we look at the stars graph, we can see that stars go down wherever SNR weight went up. That's a clear sign that clouds are reflecting light pollution down into your camera. In one case, we lost almost all of our stars. That's got to be bad, right? Because there's not going to be much signal left. But those frames are going to get weighted higher because their SNR is higher. So it's really a catch-22. So how do we get rid of these frames that are no good? You could filter on either SNR weight or you could filter on stars. I find it's usually easier to type the expression based on stars. And in this case, just by eyeballing the graph, I'm going to declare that anything with a star count of less than 400 is too few stars. And let's filter that out. And that gets rid of 201 of our 254 frames. That's a lot of data to give up for one night. That's 20%. But in practice, these are not good frames. We don't want to keep them. Now, what the value is for stars is going to vary based on your camera, the gain you're shooting at, the length of your exposure, the part of the sky you're in. I can't tell you what that number should be. You're going to have to look at your data and figure out what's appropriate. But this graph should give you a really clear indication. Most of your data should hover around one point. And then each of these gray areas is one and two standard deviations away. So you can decide how far away from your median value is too far or I guess more your modal value in this case. So now that we've actually filtered these out, or would if we actually ran output subframes, how much of a difference does it make? Like one of those cooking shows, I've put two in the oven and we'll take them out now and look. The frame on the left is an integration with all 254 green frames. The frame on the right has the 201. Both have had a, a normal conventional STF applied to them. And at first glance, these look pretty similar. But STF can be deceiving because it stretches each image based on the image. If we look at the statistics and look at the median value for each image, and since I have an ASI 1600, I'm displaying these in 12-bit values, the median in the everything image is 71.9. But the median in the 201 image is 66.5. That's more than five lower. And that means that when you go to stretch these images, you're actually going to have an easier time pulling out the faint detail in this image because the difference between the galaxy and the background starts out higher. We can demonstrate that with Blink. I have two images loaded into Blink. The first image is the one on the right, the 201 integration. The second image is the 254 count integration. And here is 
the first image. You can see it looks like this one because well, it is that one and it's got that stretch applied to it. Now Blink by default will take the stretch from your first image and apply it to all your images. And if we look at this, we can see that the background level is much higher. And so the contrast between the galaxy and the background is actually much lower. And that shows how it's going to be harder to tease out those fine details because they're not as separated from the background. So I hope this was a helpful example on how you can tell what images you should keep and which ones you should throw away. Hopefully you've got some clear skies and maybe even have been able to take some Neowise pictures. Take care, clear skies, and keep looking up.